All right, guys, so here we are in Logic, and I've got one of my projects up here, and we're just gonna basically get up the SSL channel strips. I'm just gonna show you how to go over them, how to use them, and how to utilize some of the features within them. I've had a lot of people ask over time when this track is coming out, because it was the one originally used in the Logic intros. Say my name aloud. Well, it's nice to let you know it's so nearly finished. Release date will be next year. There will be a video coming with it as well. So what we're gonna do here, I've got this uh, breakdown section here where I've got some back in bass and some other bits that need a little bit of touching up. Say my name aloud. So we're gonna get the SSLs on here. We're gonna load the SSL channel rather than just the uh, individuals but we'll get the individuals up as well. I'll just go over those afterwards. Okay, so when we look at the SSL plugin, it's relatively simple naming function right at the top. You've got filters on the left-hand side, dynamics on the right-hand side. Now, when it says filters, it doesn't just mean like a high pass and low pass. It actually refers to the whole EQ unit, the technically all filters. Um, and on the SSL, you've got a couple of key things to note. You've got a high pass and low pass directly at the top. And you'll notice when they're engaged that you get an LED come on just so that you know they're engaged. The reason being, it could be very subtly down there. At a glance, you wouldn't know. The LED tells you it is engaged and it's activated. Bring it all the way down, that LED is going to go off. And the same applies for the high end here. Um, notice as well that they both work left to right. So you'll find in some cases the low pass is going to work from the right to the left, but in this case, um, you're actually still going to work left to right. So you're starting here at high frequency on the left and going down in frequency, yeah, as you go to the right. So you're starting right up at the 20K and going down to 3K, okay? And just to note here, we're actually on the E channel. Um, the main difference is the black knobs down here. They are brown, if I remember rightly, on the G channel. And you know, it's a slight change to the EQ. If I remember correctly, the E channel is a little bit sharper in some, some a little bit sharper in some of its reductions, whereas the G channel is a little bit smoother. Um, we're not really comparing them today. I just want to show you how to use them. Um, and let's just notice the split here. So what split means is it's going to put those filters before the dynamic section. So you can have it. So you can have like pre and post dynamics for the EQ, but you can actually split the filters away from the EQ. So they're always gonna be pre dynamics, which can be quite useful because if you wanna roll off some low end, you can do it before the compressor. So just take that away so it's not triggering the compressor. Just a nice little feature and to engage it, you just have to click and it will be highlighted. When the LED is active, it's split and that's gonna be engaged. In terms of the individual EQs, they're fairly self-explanatory. The key thing you'll need to know is you'll have to engage bell on both the high shelf and low shelf if you want them to be functioning as a bell and not shelves. Um, again, LED lights up, relatively simple. You've got a dB, both plus and minus 15, and the frequency area that you can bring that shelf down to or bell functionality. Notice with the high shelves, when you put them into bell mode, you cannot adjust the Q, but you do have two bands of adjustable Q just below. And you can see here, it's narrower to the left and wider to the right. Now you've got EQ2 here, so we've got uh, a bypass option, so we can bypass the EQ or we can do dynamic sidechain. And then to the bottom, we've again got that bell engage. So going down the right hand side, we've got dynamics. Um, if we understand compressor, nice and easy. So we've got a threshold, uh, <coughs> we've got ratio first, or at least we come to ratio first. Normally you'd go to threshold, but all your three main parameters are here. So we can set our ratio, set our threshold, and set our release. There is a fast attack switch, which will significantly reduce the attack time and tends to affect transients quite harshly. We also have dynamic expansion as well, or we can engage and introduce it to working as downward expander, so it's working as a gate. Then we've got bypass, 
and CH out, channel out. I, I'm not sure why it's called CH out. What it does is it moves uh, the dynamics post EQ, so your EQ first, then compress, meaning it will go the last thing to be going out. Uh, we then have this analog on and off. So this is obviously an emulation. When we're in analog mode, there's going to be a little bit of noise and things, especially when we push some of the higher end EQ and we really get a lift in there, adds a little bit of noise, adds a bit of the SSL feel. When it's off, it's purely digital. So it takes the curves and things of the EQ, but it keeps them digital. Just down here, we've got a gain control so we can do minus 18 db and then we can for some reason plus all the way 18 db which is drastic and uh we've also got a nice phase switch really important when you, you've got a large mix especially if you've recorded live drums phase switching there is just absolutely essential and we've then also got an output gain control this would be paramount to your fader on the ssl so just using this little strip here, I'm going to just try and adjust this sound a little bit. So we've got like this uh, background noise in the buildup and we're just gonna have a little play around and see if we can use the EQ to make it a bit more pleasing to the ear. I don't think there's any need for the low end there. So I just pushed it right up and just listened to where it eased off best. Yeah, there's some sound around there I don't really like, so I'm going to dip that away a bit. something we didn't discuss the metering here in the dynamic section the right hand side here is our gain reduction and the left hand side is our gating or expansion and by how much we're doing that so i'm just uh i'm just compressing by around the 3 db here at the minute it's auto gain as well Yeah, so we've taken a little bit of that harshness out, a little bit of compression's helping it. Okay, well, that's doing the sort of job we were after. Now, I've also loaded up the other EQ for you here. So we've got the G EQ. As you can see, it's exactly the same layout, but it's flipped on its side. Um, you know, we can do pretty much exactly the same thing here, but we've just got a slight change in how this EQ would respond. And the other thing that is in the SSL bundle that you might find useful is the GBus compressor. I've done a whole separate video on that, so I'll link that uh, above or below right about now. Um, but that's essentially it. That's how to use the Waves SSL and how to understand what's going on on that channel strip. When you break it down into those little sections, it's actually relatively easy to understand. So I hope that was helpful for you guys. And uh, if it wasn't, let me know in the comments down below. I'm sure you will. And I'll get it corrected and uh, try and help you out a little bit further. I will see you guys on the next one.